Okay, so I've taken my time. I think I've put together a nice little uh, thought dump that I can do here. And without further ado, I will just go straight into it. Uh, the first thing I will do actually is I'll just go through the list again for those of you who haven't seen my reaction video and maybe don't know what the list is. Um, two cards each in the Forbidden, Limited, and Semi-Limited sections here. Our banned cards for this format are Gin Releaser of Rituals and Lavarval Chain. And if we go down to the Limited, we have Shurit, Strategist of the Necros, and Trisha the Dragon of the Ice Barrier Limited. That's the original Synchro Trishula. Some people were actually um, mistook it for Necros of Trish, and, which was kind of hilarious. Uh, for the Semi-Limited, uh, Atlantean Dragoons and Dragon Ravine. And then there's just these half a dozen general just slop cards that have just been put on the unlimited list. There's Glob Bob, Sinister Serpent, Dark Strike Fighter, Sacred Sword, uh, Temple of the Kings, and Exchange of the Spirit, which we're probably not going to talk about too much because we're going to be discussing more along the lines of the major changes. I mean, most of those uh, unlimited cards should not have even been at one in the first place because a bunch of those were just a rotted stuff and then there's the other cards that are just not really that justified. Generally, so Rituals uh, is a very well justified... Look at this thing. It's like a Mancubus. The thing's ugly as sin. It's very degenerate. Um, I'm quite happy to see this thing go. Ginlock is... Ginlock was just about everything in... Uh, Necrols aside from Trish, um, which incidentally is now pretty much, as far as I'm concerned, the only real way to play Necrols is to just go Trishula dot deck and run a whole bunch of other beat sticks. Like Trishula basically clears stuff off the board, but obviously it's not the biggest beast stick because Valkyrus is still a thing. Um, but the point is, you can now go up against Necrols and not, and the only thing you actually have to fear at that point in regards to special summon stops is like Psalm Scalding or vanities if they decide to main deck that. That's about it, and those are really easy to get over. A Negros of uh, Clausalus with the gin lock on it was a little bit more difficult because they can easily just ditch a Trish and be like, no, you can't book me. That's why, uh, what do you, yeah, don't worry about it, it's, it's just Skype. Um, but yeah, more than justified, I would say, is this uh, gin release, gin release of bands, so I don't think there's too much more to say about it, just see what it is. Just piss off. Uh, then, for our next band card, once I bring it up, Lavarval Chain. This thing was worth a shitloaf of money. Now it's probably worth, like, bugger all. It might still actually hold a little bit of value just because it is what it is, and then, when it, if it ever does come back, it's just going to skyrocket. Um, but we're not here to talk about price. We're here to talk about the usefulness of Lavarval Chain in general, in decks in general. Uh... Like, I, I, I'm still going to maintain the belief that I didn't necessarily think Laval Chain deserved to be banned, but the thing you have to consider is that most decks only ran a single copy of Laval Chain. And I say most because I'll be showing something uh, just a little bit in, in just a second here. Um, so the, fa the, the fact that they only run one means that the only legitimate way to hit it is to ban it, in which case they went and did that, they bit the bullet, they basically just went yellow swag it and just banned the level chain outright, which I suppose um, if you consider um, other certain decks is actually probably a bit more beneficial to the game. See, I, I, I've seen maybe, I, I did see one ban list, like a, a thought dump video before I made this and they actually had some really good points, but here's another point that I think some people may have forgotten about. There is still this deck. This is a deck ran by a guy, uh, Jason Hutchinson. Um, he played this at our nationals the other the other week down here in Australia, and he played this deck. Uh, if you don't know what it does, it's basically an incredibly long-winded OTK, which apparently takes 90 steps in order to actually pull off. I think the idea, just from looking at this deck straight off the top, straight off the bat here, is to basically get a whole bunch of cards in your hand. Then use Tempest Magician's effect to ditch them all to get a whole bunch of spell counters, which you would then remove in order to perf perform over 8,000 points of burn damage. It is an FTK deck, and as you can quite clearly see, it runs three copies of the Level Chain. Without those, this deck is dead. So, I think Konami had the foresight to see this deck and realize this could well be a threat, even though it may be inconsistent as all shit. 
that's pretty much the same case with Jackpot 7, and they banned both Morphing Jar 1 and 2. So, if you take a look at it from this perspective, they've take banning Levival Chain has resulted in them taking out an FTK deck that could be incredibly trollsy and could piss a lot of people off. If it's even though it actually did garner a lot of popularity around the time of Australian Nationals. I think it only held this popularity for maybe like a week or something like that, because I never actually seen the deck on Dueling Network or anything like that. So it must have been inconsistent as all hell. Either that, or it's just the creator that knows how to use the deck to its uh, to its best its best potential. So, the fact of the matter is, like, when Konami... Mo when Co in some cases, when Konami bans cards it usually gets rid of stuff like this, which as far as I'm concerned, helps the game to prosper a little bit more. Because the less FTK decks and degenerate plays like uh, Gin Lock and stuff like that, like with the, with the more of those being banned and stuff like that and just killing those stuff off, it actually makes the game a lot more fair. It may still be Power Crypt as all hell, but at least this way you don't have to worry about just running into some Dillweed that's just going to be like... I go through my entire deck, you lose, you don't get a turn. Because that is the epitome of unfair. Not that I'm saying, I mean, not not that I'm saying Gen Lock isn't unfair, but at least you actually have a way to stop Gen Lock. Here, you have to have Valor or Bast. <laughs> but, I think that that's, I think that, I think that was the grand scheme of things with the banning of the Level Chain, because it did lead to an FTK deck. It actually also pretty much killed off Clown Blade before we even have a chance to get it. Um, unless they maybe, like, just decide to get rid of Level Jam for maybe, like, one list and then bring it back for Clown Blade. Um, it might make Clown Blade a little bit broken, though, because we also have, um, Norden yet to come out, which will be coming out in a couple of months. So, I think, I think, I think for the, uh, for the overall betterment of the game, it was good to see Level Chain get banned. That's as far as I can really see with that. Um, next, we have... Shirit. I think most Necros decks only played two. I'm, I mean, I know I played two of them in my uh, in my Necros deck. Um, putting it to one, eh. you, you'd have to you'd have to know exactly when to use it. You'd have to time it well because if you use it incorrectly, then you're basically just coughing up too many resources for just pretty much nothing. Um, honestly, I don't really see much else I could talk about in regards to Shirit. I mean. This and the uh, gin release are pretty much it, it results in kind of like a decrease in the amount of search cards that you just run in Necros. I mean, it now gives it, it this it kind of oh, I'm tr I'm trying to trying to think actually. Like as far as I'm concerned, I wouldn't see anybody playing more than one copy of uh, Clausalus now. Obviously. Um, I think I think I think the big question here is where to now for Necros because they've copped they've copped enough hits. I don't necessarily think that they're going to be actual top tier anymore. I think that that will probably go to BA in all honesty because BA have actually been putting in a lot of work. Um, but I wouldn't count Necros out at all, even with these two hits. They're still a good deck. They're still pretty decent, um, and I think they're still something that you have to just be wary of, because, I mean, you don't have Jinlock, so I'm just like, okay, cool, I'll just summon all my monsters. Yeah, but if they're from extra deck, you still got to worry about Unicor, and that never got hit, so I would be rather foolish to rule, to just completely kill off, to just completely write uh, Necros off, even at this point, in all honesty. Uh, next, we have this bad boy. Um, I was kind of saddened when this initially got banned, because, like, I pulled one of, I actually pulled one of these out of a pack, which you would, if you've been with me long enough, then you'll have seen the video in which I did this. Um, this actually makes things interesting. The only thing that I kind of fear now is um, seeing this in Yang Zing. Um, Yang Zing can make this pretty damn easily. Like, it was already devastating enough to get a Mist Worm dumped on me, and that has actually happened to me at least once going up against a Yang Zing player, but Trishal is it, but Trishal is just far worse. Um, that's really my only concern with it. I mean, I don't really see a whole lot of other decks being able to use this unless, uh, unless maybe, what do you call it? Shadows could actually run a uh, Glow Up Orb in their, in their deck now, because they can easily dump it, um, 
with shadow fusion in order to use um in order to go into shack so that's a nice little um thing to have there i'm definitely gonna give it a crack because i reckon like if i'm gonna be maining a deck for this format it's definitely gonna be shadows because they never got hit um i'll also probably run satellas from here and there but at satellas i mean they never got hit either so um i think overall trishala it, it, it it's an interesting sort of concept it expands pretty much what the necrods were capable of doing and have now basically given all the other players a somewhat more difficult to summon Trishula, but if you're able to do it you get better rewards because regardless of whether or not a player has cards in their hand or grades you can still banish stuff um that's the one negative thing about uh, tr uh the necrods of Trishula is about that is as well um the only other thing is that you can't just go trish and then ditch a trish to protect trish at least not in this case, because, yeah. So it's a lot more susceptible to shit like Effect Failure. But I think that's an even trade-off. Um, I think the only real way to see how much of an impact this has on the meta is to see if decks are going to play it. That's about it. And before anybody asks, no, you're not playing this in BA, Rubik can only be used for BA synchros, so just shut up with that. <laughs> Okay, now semi limited cards. Atlantean Dragoons. Uh there you go. This guy. Hooray. You get to run two ultis of this. Your deck's still not really that great. Like Dragoons really only like it it promotes the use of maybe triple I don't know, tri triple mega level or something like that, but the fact of the matter is you've lost you, you've still only got one diva. You've lost your title. The, f the likelihood of you going into uh, rank 7 Xyz monsters is still pretty damn weak. Um, and there's not a whole... And you have access to a whole bunch of uh, rank uh, rank 4 Xyz monsters that just about every other deck has access to. So you're not really that different. But you're just far less consistent. Even with the second Dragoons. Mermails are still not going to really be a thing. They might be interesting. There might be, there might be, there might, someone might come out with one build. They've played the deck for Lord knows how long. They might come out with a build and it tops maybe a regional in the next few months. I don't know when regionals start up again because I think literally the only thing that remains in this like quote unquote season is worlds. Um, so I've got no idea when regionals start up again, but you know, someone might top a regional with Mermails. I'm not going to rule it out because Mermails are still a somewhat solid deck, but I don't really see this helping them out as much as many people would think. It's nice to have search power, but it's not really that great if you continue to, if you, you know, continue to just get bricky hands and shit like that. And most, most of the search stuff is not going to really help you that out that much. So, as far as I'm concerned, it's cool, but it's not really as uh, groundbreaking for the deck as some people may think. Same thing with Dragon Ravine, and it kind of saddens me to say this because I really want to, like, I want to play Dragoonities at some point, so I'm actually quite happy to see Dra Ravine go to two. Um, I maintain the belief that it still just should have gone straight to three, but I suppose in most cases, you know, they put Gale to two before they put Gale, before they put it back up to three. They had, seven, they had Sacred Sword at two before they put it to three, so I suppose... Some people shouldn't really be surprised that they decided to put Ravine to 2 before they put it to 3, but it pretty much just says to everyone right now, this is going. This is totally going to 3 in the next list. The only other question is, when is that next list going to be? Because Lord knows now how long it's going to be before Economy releases new lists, because I don't think they're going to really be sticking with, like, 3-month lists. Or they could just well kick us in the pants, but honestly, who knows? But, um, Ravine, I think, is pretty much just the same as Dragoons. It's nice, but it's not going to be groundbreaking for the deck that it's relevant in. So, I don't know. Unless somebody, once again, like, pulls out a Dragoonity build that sort of runs, um, shit ton of draw power and just be like, yay. Who cares? Honestly. Like, I'm happy, but no, no one really cares. Then there is the bunch of, um... Uh, unlimited cards, most of which, honestly, who even gives a crap? I mean, we got, I mean, Serpent, Dark Strike, Temple of the Kings, Exchange of the Spirit.
They were all errated cards that saw absolutely no play since coming off the list, so that was more than justified to see them come back. Sacred Sword is used in, like, Clifford Turbo, and that's just about it. But most Clifford Turbo players would only really run one because it is a once return effect, and so multiples will, in fact, clog. The only other deck I could probably see myself playing this in is maybe, like, Mecha Phantom Beasts, because I could run that uh, level 7 Mecha Phantom Beast and maybe use that as fodder. Um, there's also, you know, Gores and stuff like that, so I could maybe put together a combo like that. So you could also do, always do that. Um, you could run a shitloaf of uh, level 7s in Mermails and then just use this as for a bit of a turbo build with upstarts and something else along the like. But aside from that, um, I, I, I think there's no reason for Sacred Sword to be even be on the list. Same thing with Glob Bob, because you can only use Glob Bob once per tool, so most people are just going to play the one copy. So honestly, who gives a shit? Um, so I think in summary, Necros have been hit, but I wouldn't rule them out. Shadows and Satellas and BAs and Clifforts, none of them got hit, so they're easily the top four decks of the format, kind of. I mean, Necros can still sort of fight in the... Necros, I mean, like, if you add Necros, and they are still definitely the top five decks of the format. Possibly not Necros being number one. I think it might be more along the lines of possibly BA or even Shadows. But... Uh, Def but I, I, I definitely think that Necros have been sort of uh, roped in with this list so that they're a lot more um, even with the uh, rest of the competition. So I think I'm quite happy to see that happen. It's a multiple deck. It's definitely uh, a much more multiple deck format. Everything's about as even as it can possibly be until they just decide to rip the current meta apart, possibly in the, even in the next list, and then just create a new meta that's just like try to build Clown Blade, but we don't have Lavalva Chain for you, so you can't, or some shit. Um, then there's also Ignites, that might become the just new top deck or something like that, but um, that's what happens when you play this game, you know, meta is meta for like a year, and then new meta, and then it goes again and again and again, it's a vicious cycle. So, um, honestly, uh, would be, th yeah, that would in fact be the end of this video, how long has this been recording for? 17 minutes, yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, and I'm predicting that it's probably going to take like an hour to upload because whenever I upload, um, my internet just slows the fuck down. So maybe we should, maybe I should be discussing a new internet provider or something like that. But, uh, that's me just rambling. So I'm going to bring this video to a close now. Um, thoughts can be left in the comments section, blah, 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 you know what to do. Uh, that is about it. See you for whatever it is that I do next on this channel.